Bang. What's going on, people? I'm back again. 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 This is the third stream I'm doing this week. I told you I'm going to do a stream every single week. I want to bring the content for the people. On the biggest week of the year, the biggest week of the decade, maybe the biggest week in UFC history, UFC 300 goes down this weekend. So I'm trying to give you as much content as possible and hopefully make as much money as possible. On this show, I'm going to break down the prelim portion of the card. Last two days ago, we broke down the main card. Then the day after that, which was yesterday, we broke down all of the totals, the overs and the unders on the card and hopefully make some good money on those. There was a few that was intriguing me. And in this one, I'm going to break down the prelim portion of the card. I'm not going to be too long because like, I'm not super motivated to do this. I'm not super keen, but I'm sure once the chat starts popping, once I start speaking to a few people, I'll, I'll be back in the flow a little bit. But I have already done some recording for another show that I'm doing later. I've already done a podcast on um, TV Scout and MMA and Guru Scout and MMA. They've got the Chronic Combat Conversations podcast. I was already on that podcast for two hours. So I've been doing a lot of speaking today. Not super motivated, but you know I wanted to come and give the people some extra content. So we'll be going over the prelim portion of the card, as I mentioned. I'm going to get it up right now so you can follow me along as I speak. UFC 300 Tapology. I'm going to show you my screen, and we're going to do what we always do, boys, which is break down these fights, man. I can't wait for this card, boys. Like, Are you guys super, super pumped for this card? Because if you're not, there's probably something wrong with you. This is a legit, legit card. Shout out to all my guys here. Ryano, Daz Files, Brian Johnson, Uncle Philly, You're the Goat, Chris Jones. Appreciate you, my man. Let's go. Elite MMA. What else we got going on? The It Factor. Uh, Mason Jones, Mason Pennington saying, what's up? What, what's up, James? Appreciate the daily streams. You're welcome, bro. Appreciate you tuning in. Chris Jones saying, I followed you since the beginning. You're the most accurate MMA bet I've ever seen. I appreciate that, bro. You know, we, we try to do our best, man. We can't hit every single week, but we try to do we try to do that. Blunt Force is saying, ready for a big weekend. You already know. Um, Brian Johnson, super excited. Yeah, man. So let's get straight into it. I've got my card right now. We've got Aussie Fight Fan. Everyone go and support Aussie Fight Fan. He's always in the spaces. Um, and now he's got his own content piece on YouTube. So it's probably on the channel that you can see right there. Go and support the guy. Yeah, man. Let's get into it. Um, share screen. Give me a sec, boys. Here we go. All right. So we'll start with the first fight of the night, as always. And it's kind of crazy that the first fight of the night is um, two title holders. I've been, or two former title holders. I've been speaking about that a lot this week. And that's because it is crazy. I don't think I've ever seen this, boys. It might be the first time in UFC history where we've got two former title holders opening up the card. Has it ever happened before? I don't think so. I do not think it's ever happened before. It might never even happen again. And I think they've done it like that on purpose. Because at the end of the day, there's some other fights that ain't as good as this one. But they've purposely made this one the first fight of the night. They obviously like to start the cards off with a banger. I've seen that time and time again now. They like to go into the main card with a banger, start the main card off with a banger, and start the entire card off with a banger. But I always feel like they want to say, I also feel like they want to say, we're giving you, as the first fight of the night, two former title challenges, I believe that's, um, or two former title holders. I think that's what they're doing here. And yeah, it's going off badly, man. I think uh, this is going to be a bit of a war at times. I think Figueredo is probably going to force that war. You know, he's a crazy Brazilian motherfucker who's going to walk in front of you and just try to time heavy, heavy shots. I think his power is carried up from flyweight to bantamweight. And you don't have to have that much power to knock out Cody Garbrandt. We've seen time and time again his, his chin has failed him. And overall, I do think that um, Figueredo should be favored here. So I'm just going to do quick breakdowns on these fights, guys. I ain't going to go fully in depth on it. Because um, like I said, I've been doing a lot of videos already. So I'm kind of just going to run through this one. But I'm still going to give you everything you need to know. Chronic Combat Conversations is saying, let's go, James, the marathon, man. Yeah, you already know I've been in the marathon. Um, but we're still here, man. Let's get this money, Zico Vaga. Let's fucking go. I host, uh, Ohio State, wrestling state there. Uh, last two weekends rough, but I feel we'll get it all back. Of course we'll get it all back, bro. That's how the game goes, you know. We do have rough weeks, but we're going to win it all back. Shout out to the 170 live viewers here. And by the way, 
I'm, it's not even about winning it back because I'm up a massive amount of money this year anyway. I'm up over 30 units, even with the two worst weekends of the entire year back to back. That's how crazy this year has been. And obviously, we're going to continue to win. So that's going to go back up anyway. But make no mistake about it. I'm in heavy, heavy profit this year. One of the best years I've, I've ever had. Um, Tim Meldman is saying, my boy James is live. Liked and subscribed always. I appreciate you, brother. Don't get why we can't see Aussie Fight Fan in the chat. Oh, I don't know. That's weird. Do I think the fight goes to the, the distance? Um, not so much, man. I think that Cody's probably going to get finished in that fight. Um, but if he doesn't get finished, then, you know, I don't think he has that much finishing upside over Figueredo. So it probably is. Uh, Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Great, great fight. Azika Vargas saying a Jim Miller money line is juicy. Obviously, this is um, this is a very, very interesting fight because Jim Miller has been in, uh, has, has performed on UFC 100, UFC 200, and now he's fighting at UFC 300. It's very, very interesting to me that they've put him on this card against a fighter that I believe is a winnable fight for him. I actually think that he can win this fight and complete his free piece. Something that's very interesting is that Jim Miller has been a favorite in UFC 100 where he won, favorite in UFC 200 when he won, but now he's an underdog in UFC 300. So the only time he's been an underdog is coming at UFC 300. Um, so is he going to defy the odds? Because he didn't defy them last time. He just proved them correct with a win. Is he going to defy the odds? Jim fucking Miller, Jim A10 Miller at plus 150 at 40 years of age. At the end of the day, Bobby Green's coming off a brutal, brutal knockout loss. One of the worst KOs I've seen of the year. And that was only four months ago. Is he going to be healed from that KO? I don't know. It looked like he got KO'd about four or five times. And then on top of that, we've seen Bobby Green not perform very well against Jared Gordon. So I think the outs for Jim Miller to win are there. I think the fight should be a bit closer to a 50-50, whereas at the moment, Jim Miller's a plus 150. So, yeah, I just disagree with the line a little bit. Am I saying Jim's going to go out there and definitely win? I, I'm not going to say that, but I do think that um, he's got a decent chance to win. I'll put it that way. So we got 229 live viewers, 142 on X and 87 on Instagram. Uh, sorry, on YouTube. So, yeah, shout out to everyone. Oscar saying, greetings from Peru. Long time, no comment. I see a lot of unders hitting Saturday night. I think there's value on coders. Well, we'll see, man. Hopefully, because then it's going to be a fun card. We're winning big this weekend. Yeah, you already know. Line Movers saying, what up? You know, I ain't missing any of these streams. Yeah, man. i got to grind it out for the people, you know. And I love doing these anyway. Finesse God talking absolute bullshit. You're in profit because of the 500 to 40K. Is it being in? Because, oh, so, look, sometimes I have fun with the trolls. Most of the time, I just ignore it. Sometimes I have to call it out. It's just pure lies. I mean, finesse God, I don't know if you like, ha I don't know if you're just completely lying for the sake of lying or you just don't know, but we're up 30 units of profit. Nothing to do with the 500 to 40K bet. I didn't even track the 500 to 40K bet. The 500 to 40K bet is not even tracked. So if you go to my bet MMA, you will see the record. The entire year has been absolutely amazing outside of the last two weeks. I mean, everything is all tracked. Everything is tracked so you can see it. So it's not like I'm just making these numbers out of nowhere. But obviously, um, yeah, just internet's just complete clueless. Anyway, um, Jessica Andrade versus Marina Rodriguez. Um, this is a great fight, man. This is a great fight. I think that both fighters have finishing upside. I think both fighters have a chance to win inside the distance. I only think one girl has grappling upside, as we all know. Um, Jessica Andrade is going to take her down here, dominate her if she takes her down. If it stays on the feet, it's going to be close. But I do think Jessica should be a favorite. And the reason why is because he has the exact, um, sorry, she has the exact attributes you need to beat Mar Mar Marina Rodriguez, which is on the ground. But what I will say is that if it stays on the feet, it's going to be a close fight, man. So I'll pick Jessica because I think that she should be favored based on the grappling upside. Um, but yeah, that's my breakdown of the fight. What's up, Daz? Good value on Miller. Don't forget to like the podcast. Yes, like the podcast. If you haven't, um, if you haven't liked, if you haven't liked it yet, please like it. Appreciate that. 
Um, Zico saying we hit big three weeks in a row. Yeah, exactly. Fake Aston Martin. It's a Toyota with Aston Martin badge. Fake Rolex. Fake phone. Fake bet slips. I never win. It's all a lie. I've I've never won. My bet MMA is faked. I actually edit the fight. I actually edit it post fight. It's completely fake. What other cap had Ortega and Roy Val with the exact outcome? I didn't have it. It was complete fake. I'm the goat. I'm not a goat. I'm a complete fake. You, you, you know how it goes, boys. Um, yeah, what else we got going? This fight is my piss break. Do I specialize in MMA? Yeah, I only specialize in MMA. Um, you know, Elite saying I do tennis as well. I do tennis. I do tennis. I do football. I actually do others. But the thing is that I don't actually cap those sports, right? So I just follow people who cap those sports. I follow the people who are really good at tennis, who are really good at football. I don't actually know anything about football or tennis better myself, to be honest. I just copy people who do. Um, who cares? Let the haters hate. They're still watching you. Yeah, of course, bro. It's a good thing. Uh, Deepak saying, my lord and savior, James the GOAT. <laughs> Women's or men's te tennis. Um, both, bro. We actually specialize in both. We win a lot. Um, yeah, don't win on tennis. C complete fake. Um, fake football. Why do my fans glaze me? So yeah, this VK is obviously an idiot because he's just come in and posting a couple of hate comments. But it's all good, bro. You get that on the internet. Um, next thing is Jalen Turner versus Renato Moicano. Again, a great fight that's going to probably end inside the distance. Kind of like the women's fight, I feel. And the reason is because I think that I think Jalen Turner has knockout upside early. But I also think Hanato Moicano can make this closer. And I think Hanato Moicano can put it on Jalen Turner on the ground um, to where he might quit. You know, I've seen Jalen Turner doubt himself a couple of times, especially when he gets tired. And I feel like Moicano might be able to bring that out of him. So the plus 200 is maybe, um, maybe wide. But am I brave enough to bet it myself? Am I brave enough to bet it myself? Um, Probably not, boys. I'm probably not going to bet it myself. Overall, I do think Turner's going to blast for him early, but should Moicano really be this much of an underdog? Um, I don't know. Cone Peasy saying Turner points is live. Um, Clay Smith saying I don't like Turner in this one. Um, fair enough. So you're going to definitely play Moicano, right? Because he's plus 200 underdog. So yeah, overall, I'm going to say the line's a little bit wide, but I definitely have to, um, I have to say that Jalen Turner should be favoured just because he's got heavy, heavy finishing upside early, and we have seen Moicano finished early at the end of the day. Um, what else we got going? I'm on the tennis channel and a tennis capper, really consistently winning. He does a lot of break serve and totals bets. He's very good, so good. I'm confident using $100 units. Yeah, our, our tennis service is, is literally unbelievable, boys. Like, it's such a winning service. It's ridiculous. There's no downstreams at all. Um, there's no downswings. It's basically just neutral periods or upswings. Um, the downswings are very low. Like, the volatility is so low. It's very slight, uh, small amount of units risk. It's just consistent, steady income. And it, it's been a good uh, earner for me this year. This guy is just absolute moron. Keeps on talking rubbish. So we'll just ban him. Um, there's definitely going to be some upsets. Money might be one of them. Yeah, maybe. Ted saying, I know you already covered totals, but it feels weird to me that Lopez is moderate favor and the other one and a half is minus 200. And almost all... Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I, I kind of agree. I do think that... Um, I do think that, you know, Lopez is finishing or Lopez is winning equity is mainly based in a finish. But we have seen Sadiq very, very tough to finish, although he does get hurt. So it's like, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, for me personally, it's a weird fight, boys. I kind of feel like Lopez might get a, another standout win here. But this is a big step up in competition. We have to understand that, right? It's a big step up in competition for Lopez. But he's the same price as he was in his last two fights to where I bet him. So I bet him against Gavin Tucker at minus 160, something like that. Then I bet him again against Pat Sabatini at like minus 125. And now he wants to be the same price, minus 140, against a much better fighter than both of those guys in all realms of the game. 
I feel like at this point, the market's caught up to Lopez. Now you're paying what he potentially should be. So I just feel the line is probably fairly accurate. Elite saying Lopez sub, what's the line? It's about plus 250, something like that. Um, Sadiq never been sub before. Probably definitely could happen again. I feel like KO might be a little bit more likely. And the only reason is because um, I've seen his chin tested time and time again. And I've seen him wobble time and time again. Whereas he's not really been put in deep subs, etc., etc. James is always preaching intangibles and Lopez is the definition of that. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things that he does. Um, you know, pace, pressure, tenacity, durability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so yeah. Mason saying he watched Lopez in Nashville. He's a fun fighter. Yeah, man. Proper, proper fun fighter. I'm gonna go with Lopez for the win, but something sketching me up off about that fight. I wouldn't be surprised if um Lopez doesn't win. Next one is Holly Holm versus Kayla Harrison. I mean, Kayla Harrison is a minus 500. And I think that I'm going to go with the minus 500 here. I think that should be she should be able to get her takedowns going. And at the end of the day, Holly Holm is a kickboxer, right? So I think like Kayla Harrison is probably going to look like the preacher's mother this weekend. I think she's going to get her takedowns. As long as she makes weight well, I don't see her having too much trouble with Holly Holm, who is usually the stronger fighter. But for the first time in a long time, she's going to be the weaker fighter. And what that means is that she might not deal well with Harrison grappling her. So, yeah, I'm going to go uh, with Harrison. And I'm going to speak about this right here. Not my red real name is saying um, Harrison couldn't sub that Russian chicken PFL. Holly is going to survive at least. That's not the way we cap fights. And I'm going to tell you why, right? Because Harrison didn't sub that Russian chick. But she's not just a Russian chick. She was a, a very, very one sided fighter in that she's just a grappler. She's a pure grappler. But Holly Holm is not a pure grappler at all. She's a striker. So if she gets taken down, I definitely could see Kayla um, subbing her completely, to be honest. Um, so we don't cap fights like that. Oh, Harrison couldn't sub this chick. She ain't going to be able to sub that fighter. That's not how it goes in MMA. We can't use MMA math. We know that things are different. Each matchup warrants its own breakdown. And um, yeah, man, she was going against a pure grappler, whereas now she's going against a pure striker, completely different. So I do think Kayla can finish inside the distance. I'm actually going to pick her to finish inside the distance. The next fight is Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling. I think the, the line movement on Sterling is correct. I think that him being a um, favorite makes sense because it's fairly close on the feet. Yeah, he might get knocked out. He might get hurt, but I do think it's fairly close. I don't think it's crazy wide on either fighter. Aljamain Sterling probably has some kicking upside here. So, you know, and probably some volume upside, even though Calvin Cater will suppress some of that volume, I still do think it's possible. And then on top of that, um, Al Jermaine has a big grappling edge here. We haven't seen it that much, um, Calvin Cater wise. You know, we haven't seen him on the ground. We haven't seen him grappled. But I tend to think that Al Jermaine's one of the best in the world at MMA grappling. So I think that he should be favored just based on the grappling and then the striking being close. So I'll pick Al Jermaine Sterling here. Uh, speaking of like bets and stuff, a prop that stuck out to me is the plus 175 on the under two and a half Calvin K. Aljamain Sterling. I haven't pulled the trigger myself, but it, does, it did stand out to me. I can't lie. The next fight is Jury Prohatska versus Alexander Rakic. And you see, if I want to run through these breakdowns, I can run through them very easily. You know, we, we've gone through 70% of the card and it's only 18 minutes gone. And I've been answering loads of chats. So I think that... Um, a lot of fights are, they deserve a lot of um, breakdown. A lot of fights deserve heavy breakdowns. But some fights don't deserve heavy breakdowns at all. Some fights actually deserve quick breakdowns. This fight, I could go in depth on it. I'm not going to lie, but I'm not going to. I think Rakic has some upside here in the technicality, but obviously Jiri Prohatska has upside in all the intangibles, right? Well, I'm not going to say all because you could speak about durability being one, but Jiri's going to push a crazy pace. He's going to try and shoot takedowns if he feels he's outmatched on the feet. And also on top of that is um, I think that I think Rakic can probably get his own takedowns, but I think Jiri hits harder than Rakic. And I think that he's, his ability to thrive in chaos is a little bit better than Alexander Rakic's. Is. But I have to favor Rakic because I think that Jiri's a little bit vulnerable. Um, he's been cracked before. He's been dropped before. He's been hurt before. And on top of that, I think that um, Rakic can get his own top time. And while he might not perform well coming back off a leg injury, 
no one really knows that. It's kind of like it's kind of like up and down, you know, as to whether he is going to perform well coming back off that injury. So basically, guys, I'm trying to like long winded breakdown to say that I don't really, I don't really know um, who's going to win the fight, but I do think Rakic will win it based on what Mitch is saying. Like Jiri isn't that great overall. I don't think, man. Um, so yeah, man, I'm just going to go with. I'm just going to go with uh, Rakic based on that. And I think that's the entire prelim card. Yeah, so now we're back on... That's it. I've already broke down the main card for you. So that's the entire breakdown done for you easily. 20 minutes done. It, it was actually like 12 minutes or something because um, obviously I was speaking to the chat for a lot of the time. So boys, got any questions for me before I kick out? We'll probably keep it at about 25, 30 minutes. Um, just a quick one today, boys. Shout out to the 440 live viewers right now. We're always getting tons of live viewers, so I appreciate everyone here. Hopefully giving you out some good content this week. I'm going to be going live again tomorrow. So, yeah, every single day this week, I'm um, putting out some content because it's UFC 300 fight week, baby. we got to put out the real the real stuff this week. Um, how much money are you going to lose this weekend? Well, obviously, we're going to try to win money, not lose money. Um, like we've been, you know, we've been winning basically the entire year. So hopefully we can continue that. Gray Span is saying, I want to see Aljo and Kate at face offs. Everybody keeps saying he's not that big for 145 and his size advantage is gone. Uh, but he was a huge. Yeah, exactly. I don't think Kate is going to be like super huge. I, don't, I personally don't think so. Um, you're going to extend the free trial. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm letting, I'm currently, so the free trial is done. I'm currently letting all of my members get the best of the lines, lock in all of their bets. Maybe I'll do it in a couple of days um, just to give some people some more time. But I probably won't ever do a free trial again after this um, because I don't know when the wins and the losses are going to come. All I know is we're going to win tons of money over the year like we have done this year and every single other year trapped on Tips, literally winning tons of money for six years. But obviously there's weeks where we lose in that year. So I don't know when those weeks are going to come. So me doing a free trial... And it just so randomly happened that that free trial came on the two weeks where I'd done the worst on the year. It was like, it's kind of funny, really. Like, it's, it's terrible. Not funny, but, you know, you have to laugh at it. Terrible timing. So based on that, I probably won't do um, free trials anymore because I could do a free trial on a losing week and then win the next 10 weeks. But then all the people on the free trial didn't win. So, you know, I've probably learned a lesson there, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, best bet on the prelims, Ohio State. Best bet on the prelims, man. I don't know. What what one was I confident in? I said Jim Miller's decent. I, I I like Jessa Andraj. I feel like she should be a decent favorite. Do you think Andraj gets the sub? Um, it's tough to say, man. I don't really know. I don't really know. I just think it's a big, big body with strong hips. Aljo couldn't take down Sean. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Aljo looked like he muscled up from the pitchers. Yeah. Had Bo Nichols' father, Jason Nichols, on a, Oh, really? That's crazy. He's confident Bo gets the sub over the TKO. That's very interesting. You had his uh, dad. That's funny, man. Shout out to you. Bringing in the big guns on your first few episodes. Oh, no, that was in the space, so maybe it's different. You got too much content, Ozzy. I'm getting confused. Bo Nichols' dad works for the books. Everyone works for the books on your on, <laughs> from your uh, point of view. I do feel bad for those guys. I don't mean they should sign up for... I don't, man. They should sign up for the year and take their loss and scurry. Yeah. I mean, I understand, though. You do free trial. You sign up like... You're obviously going to be annoyed if it doesn't win. But that's why I'm not going to do them anymore. Because I'm not Nostradamus. I can't time every single weekend where we win. I can't pro promise profit on a single event. But I can on the year. Um, so I understand it from both sides, JB. Obviously, experienced people will understand. Like they just look at my record and be like, "Oh yeah, sweet. We'll stay with him long term, so we win." But not everyone is experienced. Not everyone can handle the emotions week to week, and that's just really the reality of it. So I probably won't um, do that ever again. Jury and Rakic over one and a half. Is Kayla inside the distance of plus one thirty good value? Um, I think the under is a similar price, bro. Maybe even better. I reckon I just I reckon I just uh, play the under, to be honest. I'm just saying I know when I first signed up, I didn't size units right because I just knew we would win every week and lost a huge percentage of my bankroll. Luckily, I stuck around. 
yeah, that's the thing. If you leave during the losses, then you ain't going to be there for the um, wins, which we win most of the time. So, you know, that's just unfortunate. But some people are made for the game and some people are not. It really, really comes down to that. How do you feel about Jim Miller sub at plus 650? It's all right. It's all right. But, you know, Bobby Green coming back off that knockout, it kind of leans me to feel like, oh, maybe he'll get the knockout. Bobby Green's very hard to sub, man. You know, I don't think he's actually ever been submitted. And I mean, the guy's had like 40 fights. Let me look at his record now. Has he ever been submitted? If it was, I don't think it was in the UFC. Um, ground and pound. Yeah, he's getting knocked out a couple of times lately. But no, I don't think he's ever been submitted, you know. Rear naked choke in 2009. Um, yeah, so he's never been submitted in the UFC. The only time he's been submitted is 2009. <laughs> toe hold and um rear naked choke so yeah he's never been submitted or he hasn't since 2009 so yeah hills and creek saying don't know why people pay for picks they can make themselves if they have any clue about mma it's all mostly chance in this sport well that's completely incorrect um respectfully it's obviously not chance you know that's why people like me can earn a lot of money and people that attract on better MMA can earn a lot of money because we know what we're talking about um but it's just, you know, I, I, I follow people in other sports because I don't know about their sport. You know, it's the best thing you can do in any in, in, in gambling is follow sharps. That's literally the best way to make money easily. I do it. The only reason I don't follow sharps in MMA is because I am a sharp in MMA. I follow myself. But in every other sport, I don't cap that sport. Fuck that. I just follow sharps. So literally my service, I... Like if I wasn't, if I didn't have my service, I would follow my own service. I follow shops in many other sports because that's the best way to make money. It's just an easy way to make money. I'm just filling the club and sub on this card like a lot of them. Any good props for Andrade or just money line? Um, probably inside the distance, um, but I don't know about props specifically. Jim Miller has been subbed a bunch of times, actually. Yeah, Jim, but not Bobby, but yeah. I think Charles at that price is great value. I can understand it, but I, I really think Armin's going to win. Bet what you know always. Can't bet sport you don't know. Yeah, exactly. I humbly disagree. Di Hills and Creek proof is in the pudding. Just listen to the knowledge. The info you get even from the free streams is genuinely more than most would have learned in years. Yeah, I always try and give tons of information out on the free streams, you know. Um, and I know it's helped a lot of people, so I'll continue to do it. Daz is saying, first time follow a cap of thought. It was just like printing money. So from my usual 10 unit. About $100 units, lost 1.1K most ever for the first time. Yeah, man. A lot of people think that, um, you know, when you first get involved in the game, like you just follow a capper and they win nonstop. But obviously, if if that was possible, um, there'd be a lot more rich, rich, a uh, lot more millionaires in the world. Grace Band, Andrade, Nickel, Olives, Miller, Aljo, Holloway, all live for the club and sub. Yeah. That's that's very true, to be honest. Baby Sharp saying, bro, literally all your videos, I feel I fast forwarded my journey six years and helped me to already avoid dumb mistakes. Man, these are the best messages, you know. It, two of the best messages. This, when people say they've learned from my stuff, learned from my stuff. And then second is when people tell me I've earned them so much money from my service. These are the two messages I love reading. So I appreciate you sharing that with me. I'm going to continue to make videos to help you become a better gambler. You don't have to sign up for the service. You can just watch my free videos if you want. Um, so, yeah, 28 minutes now, boys. I said 30 minutes and we'll go. So 30 minutes and, and we'll leave. Another minute. What we got going on? I've already answered that one, brother. I kind of like the money line. Jack saying, appreciate your lucrative bounce back week. Let's get it. I really didn't know any better. I just thought, well, check their record. They always be winning. Yeah. Always winning. Not really, but mostly winning. Yeah. S -s Some of us. 100%. These are facts. Yeah, appreciate you, boys. i um, going to continue with the content this week. Going to be putting out a bunch more content this week. Parlay Madness is coming a couple of days tomorrow, the two days, whenever it is. I get confused myself these days. Um, so, yeah, man, not too much more to say. Happy you guys are sticking with it for real, yeah. I don't have the cap in service because I'm a student that can't risk units big enough to make it worthwhile. Makes sense, but if you've... But you've helped me with understanding bankroll management. So shout out for that. Ah, you're welcome, brother. You're welcome. My man, Daz Files. Ah, oh, bro, legend. 
Absolute legend. I think that's my biggest don't know. No, you know what? I did have one bigger once from Captain Service. Shout out to my guy. But thanks. Appreciate that. That is for the $50. I'm going to put that on a crazy parlay just for you, Daz. Ah, that's funny. Gray's saying that ex exact exact thing. Um, James, you got to put that on a parlay. Yeah, like literally, um, I just said it as you typed it. That's funny. Degenerates. Degenerates are like, boys. I'll never understand anyone cheering for the bookies. Of course not. We never do. Good on you, Daz. Good karma for your parlays. Yeah, that's it. Daz, so you gave me a unit. Bro, legend, man. I appreciate that unit. I'm going to put that unit on something special, maybe the JB special. Um, all right, boys. I'm done now, but shout out to everyone. Big shout out to Daz. And that's it. Under three minutes. I don't know, bro. I, I don't know, man. I'm out. Bomb.